Welcome back. We continue our conversation now with Congressman Ted Deutsch. Congressman, so let's talk a little bit about some of the issues that Congress has, has dealt with, particularly health care. So the health care bill went down. Every Democrat stood together, voted it down. Republicans splintered. Is there going to be any move, though, going forward to try to fix some of the problems that are actually in effect in Obamacare? Well, I, um, I wish I could tell you that we were going to come back uh, to Washington and have a discussion about how to drive up enrollment and how to have more competition, which is really uh, central, something that we need to work on. That will help bring down premiums. I wish that we could have a conversation about negotiating, uh, giving Medicare the ability to negotiate drug prices. That would bring down costs. But I don't see it happening. The problem is, uh, I guess when you vote time and time and time again to repeal the Affordable Care Act, and then you bring a bill forward that would cause 24 million people to lose their insurance, would drive up the cost for everyone else, uh, would hit seniors and the poor hard, um, and, and most importantly, this thing fell apart when they tried to strip away the essential health benefits, pediatric care, emergency room care, uh, the, the, the central parts of the Affordable Care Act. People looked at that and said, no, there's no way we we're going to go for it. That's why it was so unpopular. And even the entire Republican majority and the president had to realize they couldn't push forward something that was so wildly unpopular and would do so much damage. What I guess I'm wondering is, do the Democrats run the risk of being a little too cocky about this loss by the president well, in that Democrats are still identified with Obamacare? And Obamacare does, I don't believe it's in a death spiral. I'm not talking that we're in a death spiral. But I'm saying there are issues that need to be resolved. Why not try to reach out and work with some of the more moderate elements within the Republican Party? Mm -hmm. The president, in many of his mixed signals, but in at least some signals, has said he'd be willing to work with Democrats. Why not try to put something forward with that and, and then, let, then let the Republicans vote that down again? Well, I, those conversations are taking place. There have been efforts. We've, I've had conversations with my Republican colleagues. There are lots of discussions that have taken place where uh, Democrats have said to Republicans, look, let's sit down and address the, the concerns that we share about how to, to get more people covered, how to bring down costs, um, ways that will strengthen the Affordable Care Act. But let's not go into those discussions thinking that the driving force is repealing Obamacare and kicking 25 million people off of the insurance rolls. Um, on, there, are, there are Republican colleagues of mine who understand that we should be having a, a rational discussion about strengthening a law that has helped millions and millions of people. The problem is the president hasn't shown a willingness on this issue. Uh, he tweeted his attack against the Freedom Caucus, against the Tea Party, and against Democrats, and, and seemed to say this can only happen if he works with Republicans to do it. You're right. That's not the right approach. The right approach is to work together. Uh, we're willing to do it. There just needs to be some good faith shown. You're a, uh, I give you full credit, you are a smart uh, person, you are on, on various levels, including political. So I will ask you this as, as more of a political I'm question. About this question. No, no, this Thank is, you. because because when I'm buttering you up, then I'm exactly. uh, going to yeah. hit you. You know, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, you obviously sit in meetings with, with your Democratic colleagues, and don't insult us to say this isn't a topic of conversation. You know, where is the balance between you know, right now you've got the Democrat, you got the president on the ropes. How much is, it, which is more important to the Democratic Party right now? Keeping the president weak by denying him any sort of victory, even a bipartisan one, or working with him to try to come up with a solution? Well, I think the, the sense that, that we share is that we have to continue to look for ways to work together. That, that doesn't mean that we're going to work together to uh, repeal the Affordable Care Act uh, that has been so beneficial for so many in this country. Uh, and it, it doesn't mean letting the president put forward ideas that are going to be harmful to the middle class. Uh, th this health care bill that they rolled out and tried to pass was really just a massive tax cut, almost a $900 billion tax, billion dollar tax cut uh, masquerading as a health care bill. That's not something he's going to get support from me or other Democrats on. But 
with this talk of infrastructure, well, we all believe that infrastructure is important. Down here in South Florida, it's really important. Port Everglades, the, the, the issues in my district that, that really matter, um, Everglades is a big piece of that. Those discussions, again, have to start with a willingness to, to understand that there has to be some compromise. Investing in infrastructure is great, but if the infrastructure bill the president gives us is one that says it's got to be entirely done through the private sector and the result is that everyone in my district in South Florida has to pay more tolls on every road and is every that bridge, what you're, that's is a problem. That, but is that what you're hearing? Because what I heard was private partner private-public right. partnerships, not necessarily all, all privately right. funded. And, if, and there, are some, there, there are some on the right wing of the Republican Party who don't want any public dollars spent. There are some in my party who don't think that any part of this should be private and should entirely be publicly financed. Uh, I do think that there's an opportunity to, to work together to find a way to make the kind of investments that will help strengthen our infrastructure so that we can compete internationally. Uh, that's, that would be a positive way forward. And I, yes, we do look for that. At the same time, you bet I'm going to fight as hard as I can on attempted efforts to repeal the Affordable Care Act, just as I'm going to fight against any efforts that try to rewrite the tax code to make it more of a giveaway to special interests and the wealthy. Is there room, though, on, on tax reform that you can see? Could you see some working I, on the on some of the corporate tax rates and some of the other tax rates on the, you know, maybe up more in the middle class range than necessarily on the higher? I think if, I think if we can do something to uh, to make things better for middle class families, uh, to help encourage people uh, who are looking to start businesses, and, uh, and to repatriate, to bring back all of the dollars that are being held offshore, if we can ensure that those dollars come back and are invested to strengthen the economy and to help create jobs, then that's something we ought to be able to work together I on. Wanna, I want to go to a couple of things just in our final couple of minutes sure. here. Um, your colleague, Congressman Lois Franco, has made a big push with regard to um, the federal government paying more to Palm Beach to cover the exorbitant expenses. I'm sure you're part of that as well. Yeah. So with regard to when Donald Trump comes to Palm Beach, it's 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 basically a three million dollar tab for the for the taxpayers for, from the federal side. I don't even know how much it is, you know, in the county side. You know, what do you want to see? Do you want to see him just come here less, or do you want the feds to just pay more? Well, when the president comes to Mar-a-Lago to to golf, which he likes to do, look, people like to come to Florida for the great weather, and a lot of people like to golf. The fact that he's the president um, doesn't make him any different in that way. But when he comes, it costs a lot of money, and it costs Palm Beach County a lot of money to provide additional security. Should there not comes. be the pride, though, of having the president here? Should we not? Should, is that well, just not the cost of having the pride of the president in our neighborhood? I don't think that the taxpayers of Palm Beach County should be forced to shoulder 100 percent of the burden of having the president come down here to play golf. There are other issues with Mar-a-Lago. He's got the he's got the Chinese president coming here this week. Uh, we've got national security concerns about those visits as well. Uh, if he's going to come down on a regular basis, we have to make sure it's secure, but we also have to make sure that the costs to provide that security uh, aren't borne entirely by the people of South Florida. All right. Um, you have, in a real, what I would consider a real profile and courage, you have come out against the killing of puppies. You are pushing forth a piece of legislation right. called the Prevent Animal Cruelty and Torture. I'm making a joke. I know I, it's I, not funny. I, I know it's a serious subject. But who is against? Boy. Who is? Who, where is the pro animal cruelty faction? That is a really great. That's a really great question. We uh, introduced. I introduced this legislation with Lamar Smith, a great uh, member of Congress from Texas, who, when he's not working with me, uh, to to help. To provide safety for the welfare of animals. He's arguing whether climate change is real. This is just to show you that we have to find areas to work together. This is one the PACT Act, Prevent Animal Cruelty and Torture, would make animal cruelty for the first time in history a federal offense. It would make it easier for the federal government to ensure that the kinds of horrific things that too often are done to animals. So why did it fail yeah. last year when you introduced it? Uh, it fell last year. We, we were able to, to secure a, a lot of co-sponsors. We couldn't make it a priority. Uh, there so it was, never got on the floor? So it didn't get to, that's right, so we didn't have a chance to move it forward. Now we're trying to make it a priority. You're right. Who, in, in all of the things and issues that we face, who could possibly be against I wanna, stopping animal cruelty? I, I wanna, I'm, I'm confident we're going to get this done. I, I got to wrap it. I want to I meet the pro-animal cruelty lobbyist. He's got to be a lot of fun. All right, we'll be right back after the break.